a good afternoon YouTube or good morning or good evening depending on where you are in the world today I'm going to attempt to do a break video here today with our 2001 Buick LeSabre Custom it has the 3.8 series 2 with the 15 inch wheels on it I do mention 15 for a reason because uh, there are a slight differences in the size of the caliper bracket for a 16 inch wheel versus a 15 inch wheel but other than that everything else as far as the caliper the pads uh, should be the same uh, I believe the rotors are uh, smaller on the 15 inch I had a hard time getting clarification on this so I'm sharing it with you guys now hopefully it'll save somebody else some of the craziness of trying to figure stuff out so anywho um, we're gonna get started here like I said it's our 01 Buick LeSabre here um, the what I selected to use was a pretty good deal off of the Amazon um, these are the Wrangler here's the uh, part numbers here uh, BD 125 5507 E uh, these are nice because these are the um, and if you can see that on camera how it's painted these are the coated E coated rotors so hopefully those will last a little longer and not rust as quick I'm also doing the Wrangler ceramic uh, quiet stops I believe they are um, and that is the part number on them which is ZD699 uh, also on the interwebs if you go up on the Amazon you can get those there chose to go with these because I've had very good luck with them they do create a little bit of brake dust because that's what's currently on there now as you can see these wheels were probably cleaned uh, maybe about half a month ago and you can see they're pretty coated now so a little bit on the brake dust side but they're quiet um, so far and they last a really long time. The ones that are on there have been on there for about, I'd say, 11 to 12,000 miles. Same exact pads. Um, I don't think the pads are necessarily due, but I used AC Delco crappy rotors like the Economy ones, and they're warped. So, hence why we're doing this today. And we're trying to check everything else over for inspection. So, get you set up on tripod. I'm going to quit yammering. Some of the stuff you will need, just a quickie here, is a, a decent... Um, socket wrench i believe we only are going to need the 15 millimeter socket i don't know yet until we get in there i got a nice extension a longer ratcheting to give us a little more leverage these are for uh, big pliers you don't need these you can use a c-clamp too for compressing in the piston got a couple wire brushes a magnetic dish uh, i have impact tools but you can do all this with a uh, breaker bar um, uh, or you know obviously hand tools to get stuff loose and I got the jack properly supported jack stand under there for safety and a 19 millimeters what tears off these lug nuts on here and uh, paper towels I got some ultra permatex ultra parts lubrication silicone I got two cans of brake cleaner a angled die grinder with a pretty aggressive wheel on it just for cleaning up the hub in case there's any rust on it and um, and a screwdriver, just flathead screwdriver, a big honky one so I can get in there and kind of pry the caliper as well as get any clips off. So, um, should be everything. I mean, if there's anything else that you need, I'm, you know, a file would be good too. And I'll explain that later on in the video to clean up rust if you, especially if you live in a rust belt like we do in uh, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. So, I'm um, going to get you set up and then we're going to get tearing into this and see how we can make a decent video or not today. Okay, we're going to go ahead and get tearing into this. Um, this is the type of wheel I have now. Once again, if you don't have air tools, um, leave it on the ground before you jack it. Just crack the lug nuts loose. You don't have to loosen them completely. Just get them so that you know you're going to be able to get them off to keep the wheel from spinning on you. So do break those loose on the ground if you don't have air tools. I have air tools, so I don't need to. Uh, hopefully, I should say. <laughs> Sit that aside. Try not to knock you over with the air hose is my goal got my 19 millimeter and tear this off sit those right inside there take the wheel and get it out of the road just get that out of the way now you have your typical brake system here you got your uh, rotor your caliper, your caliper bracket. Um, so what we're going to do is I'm going to see if this will, I'm going to turn the wheel out towards me. Um, reason for that 
is so that I can uh, get better access, gain better access to everything back here to show you better. Let me see. Uh, now I'll have to deal with the steering wheel. So hold tight, guys. Let me do that. Okay, so what we have, I'm going to get you a closer view here because I'm going to be keeping the camera on tripod uh, while I'm doing the work. So I'm going to give you a quick close-up here, especially if you're a first-timer. Uh, so what we're after here is we need to get the uh, caliper off here. So first thing we're going to do, and I believe these are 15s, I'll correct myself in a minute if I'm wrong. We're going to zip these out. These can be a little difficult to get out because they slide into the caliper bracket and they can get seized. Um, we're going to get that off. We're going to safely secure the caliper out of the way until we're ready to work with it because we're going to do some things with this too. And then below here, I'll try to get this on camera here. Let me see if I, this here, and there's one up here right there where my finger's touching is the caliper bracket bolts that don't need to come out. Uh, try not to let it dangle from the hose. You don't want to cause any damage. So we'll go ahead and uh, get my hanger and I'll be right back. Okay, we're back again. Sorry for all the stopping and starting. Just want to make sure that you guys are getting a clear image here. So what we're going to do here is uh, I'm actually going to start off with um, my uh, getting this is a little hanger I was telling you about that we can hang the caliper up. I'm just going to temporarily hang that there. Uh, we're going to start off by doing something here. Um, first, I'm going to see if I can... I'm just getting inside the rotor there, and I'm just pulling the caliper out. That'll help just compress it a little bit so that this caliper will come off there easier. Um, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to uh, hook up the... Well, this is obviously just the way I do it, but I'm going to hook up my smaller impact, which this is really nice. This is a Flexzilla uh, little handheld light half inch um, impact really nice I'll do a review on this uh, this will kind of serve as a review here as soon as I can figure out how to use this because I don't know if this there we go I didn't know if that was any good so I'm sure this is on loose which it's not so now we're gonna come up here and we're gonna tear off these upper ones they are 15 these outer bolts here Now, don't be alarmed if that happens. A lot of times, um, you have to break these loose with a um, some kind of breaker or larger leverage. So we're gonna go ahead and man, that is really tight. Wonder. There we go. That's that one. I did the brakes on here too. That's not like me. There we go. Okay. Now that'll make life a lot easier. The chuck on this thing. Of course, I'm trying to do a quote unquote review, but it's being weird. All right, so we'll do the bottom one first. Um, what I like to do is get behind it, and that helps pull it out. Now, there is a rubber garment that goes on the ends of these. Sometimes they stay in there, not the end of the world. Sit that aside. I'll try to do the top one here. Should be able to get on there. Okay. Now, I'll go ahead and uh, the screwdriver behind it. Easier if I had a wrench to do this with. Let me try to do this. Alright, now it may just come out on its own. Now I'm gonna have to. There we go. Sometimes they can be a little bugger. So there was the garment I was telling you about. So that goes in the top. Just remind me later, guys, uh, that the one with the top came out, not the bottom. Alright, now we're ready to go ahead and pull our caliper off, which should come off semi easy. Of course, there's always. Something that's going to want to hang you up here. We're changing all this so we don't have to worry about too much about prying stuff. And we're going to go ahead and put that in there. And we're going to just hang this guy up in and use the actual strut spring. There you go. Out of the way. Now, they are getting kind of down. Actually, further down than I thought they were. They're still uh, far enough away from the uh, indicator there. But that's okay. Might as well get them changed if I'm doing a rotor. So I don't like to put used pads on rotors. We'll go ahead and take these clips off because our pads come with new hardware. Or use the old pads with new rotors, I should say. Them aside, now these ones here, I'm just gonna go ahead and not even bother. I'm gonna use the breaker bar first because I know these are gonna be really tight uh, for the caliper bracket. Try not to knock you guys over in the process here. I might have to stand up for this one. That wasn't too bad. Then the top one right here. 
There we go. Now that I've broken those loose, I should be able to just throw the impact on there. Keyword should. <laughs> That'll make life a little quicker for us. There we go. That way you don't have to wrench it the whole way out. You know what I mean? Grab it my arm here. And we'll set our bracket aside. Bolts you could probably just leave there. They're not hurting anything there. Take our rotor off. Okay, put that aside, replace an S, nobody cares. And uh, so what we're gonna look for, and like I said, I recently serviced this front uh, brake system on here whenever I replaced the rotors again. Um, Amazon gave me a credit back on the AC Delco ones that warped. I went ahead and got another set like an idiot and they warped again. So I recently had all this off. So the hub is still pretty clean. I'm gonna probably just go over it a little bit around here with just a wire brush, but I don't look like I'm gonna have to use any kind of abrasives per se on here. We'll just clean it with some brake clean and I like to spray a little fluid film on the hat there. Um, so that should do that. Now I'm gonna pause you guys. I'm gonna come back and show you how to clean up the bracket. Okay, so I like to clean these brackets up because they can get a lot of corrosion and stuff in them and uh, cause rust jacking on your brake pads. Now, unfortunately, it's really dark in here, so I don't know how well this is going to show up. Uh, but basically, where the hardware sits inside these little areas right here uh, need to be cleaned. Now, you got to be cautious. I don't have any spare rubbers for these. These ones look okay, but you got to be cautious when doing this that you don't grab these and rip them and lose them or whatever when you're trying to clean them up. So what I like to do is to somehow uh, carefully, if I can here, pretty unprepared for this video today. <laughs> Wasn't even going to make one, but I was like, yeah, you know what, what the heck. So, like I said, you're going to be careful not to grab this little rubber here. Uh, I'm going to use a grinder with one of these uh, coarse wheels on it here and uh, go inside there and clean that up. Now you can also just use a file, which is probably a good idea to start with a file, because this usually only polishes the rust. You want to actually get the rust out of there, so a, a flat file would be good to kind of run through here, but this is actually pretty clean, because like I said, I just serviced them recently, so. told the noise alert. <laughs> anyway, so that's cleaned up. The point is to get these nice and clean, nice and shiny, no rust in here. Uh, and then what we're going to do next, I will show you in a second. Okay, so what I did was I took this outside and just gave it a quick hose off with some really good brake clean. Um, make sure these are good. There's no tears in your uh, little boots, your little booties. Just kind of dry it off. Now what I like to do is the what I call make sure you're still in the frame there. I like to do what I call the Eric O method, which is to use this here, brake lubricant, and take a little bit on the brush here, I not trip over everything here, and I go right inside these little areas here. I have to go crazy, you just want to get enough in there. Now I'll get it in there and then I'll use my finger to maneuver it to where I need it to be. And what this method is for is to help try to prevent rust from building inside here during the life of the pad, which can cause rust jack jacking, which is basically the swelling of the, uh, the rust will swell the pads, like it'll put pressure against them because the rust expands and it'll cause swelling. So when it does that, it causes the pads to get jammed and wear unevenly. So, I said I'm going to clean up. I have a little bit too much on here. I'm just trying to get it down in there real good. Okay, now I use my towel here. Wipe it off. Now what I'm going to do is go right through the middle here and clean up the center because you don't want it to touch 
them get pressed against your rotor. You go to put these on, so clean up the excess. Just going in the middle and pushing against that. Okay, now these clips, little hardware clips here, uh, they got to go, how do they go? I always get confused with these, uh, like this. They kind of go in there like this. There's little tabs in the middle there, you got to kind of get them put into place. They go on like that. Like this. Beautiful. And then once again, I like to go gently just kind of dab in between the clips to make sure none of that oozed out that breaks up because you don't want it getting on your pads or uh, well your pads and on your rotor your new rotor here now I don't put any grease on the inside of these clips here because uh, like I said these clips here you want them to be nice and clean and allows the pad to slide back and forth here's a good look at this side here so I check these these are nice and free and clear uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and get this back over by the vehicle and then we'll clean up the pins, add some of that lubricant to the pins. Uh, but in the meantime, we've got to prep our new rotor uh, to get it put on. Okay, so we're at the rotor here. What I like to do is take your classic generic brake clean here, a nice clean rag. And with the E-coated ones, I don't go too crazy with brake clean because I don't know how resilient this paint is that they coat it with. Um, to brake cleaner, it could ruin it, the finish. So what I do is I put a good deucing on my rag and I kind of just go around. Because sometimes they put grease on these, uh, clozamine? Clozamine, clozamine. Probably pronouncing wrong. I'm the worst at pronouncing things. Uh, which is more just a packing grease to keep them from rusting and while they're sitting or waiting to be shipped. And I'm gonna flip it over and do the same to the other side. And with the E-coated, that's all you really gotta worry about. Uh, most of these you don't even have to anymore. Some of them they put like a little packet in the plastic which keeps, you know, the grease, uh, or I'm sorry, the moisture from building up. So now we're going to go look at our hub and get ready for it to be prepped. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to clean up the base of the hub here. I got this little brush, uh, wire wheel, I should, or wire brush, basically just going in between around the hub here. So this one shouldn't be too bad because I just recently did a service on this. Uh, when I say service, I like to, halfway through the life of the brakes, I will tear them all apart, clean everything up, get rid of rust on the bracket that I just showed you how to do, clean this up, make sure the sliders are lubricated, and then put everything back together. Some might consider that to be ridiculous. I like to do it because, well, why not? I mean, if it's gonna prolong the life of your uh, brakes, I mean, why would not do it? So, like I said, this was pretty good. I don't see any reason to go too crazy here. Um, I'm just trying to get any kind of rust because you don't want your uh, rotor to sit on here uh, pocked or anything like that. You want it to be nice and even. So now I'm going to give us a little squirt of the good stuff here. clean everything up while we're here. Go around the back and any of the excessive, excessive I can't speak today, uh, break dust off everything. You can see a nice new shiny bolt in here. We've reached, or I recently put on new, uh, um, new uh, CV axles on here. Now, while we've got everything going there, we're gonna bring our caliper back down here to us, which I should have did first, because this is gonna end up making a mess on our freshly cleaned hub. Is let me get a napkin here, get some of the grease. I like to use a lot of grease. <laughs> All right, so um, what we can do here is I like to clean this out, get any excess of, because I mean here, like I said, this stuff's gonna rust these calipers, so get any kind of, I'm trying to do this dainty for the video, but normally I just kind of go crazy on this stuff. Um, Go in here and clean off any rust, especially along the ears here. These are the ears of the calipers. Um, the inside, this ain't important. I'm just doing it because there's loose paint on it. Um, this is very important because you want your pads, especially on these ears, on the inside of these ears, you want your pads to sit nice and straight. Now this, I'm just kind of going over to clean up any debris that could be on the front of this caliper piston. Uh, 
Okay. Not too shabby. Get in there a little bit. Sure there's nothing in there that shouldn't be. Now you can also use, uh, like I was saying before, what's very helpful for doing helpful for doing brake jobs is you can also use uh, a file on the back of this if you have any imperfections or rust jacking. Uh, I mean, if you're replacing the caliper, obviously you don't have to do that. But um, if you have any imperfections on the back of this, these ears, you could take a, a square file to it. All right, so now I'm going to take, kind of hang it down here. I know I'm going to hang it from the hose, but just for a minute, because I want to give it a good squirt with brake clean here. Get all these loose stuff off here. Beautiful. Kind of let that dri uh, drip there a little bit. All right, so now what we're going to do is get that supported on there best I can. Make sure you guys are still in frame, which you are. Good. Good, good. I'm going to get these pliers here, these slip pliers that I have, and I'm going to try to figure out how they work. I need to bring them in a little bit. Um, a little more out. Now I'm going to take them and I'm going to go on them like this. We'll attempt to without dropping it. I'm just going to compress, carefully compress the piston in. I should mention it's a good idea to pop the hood and open the cap up because that'll help relieve the pressure uh, as well. I forgot to mention that. I'm going to actually back these out just a little bit more here. There we go. Now you can also, like I said, use a C-clamp. They actually have a special tool for this, but I've never really in the past had too much trouble doing it this way. Now, if your caliper's having too much trouble compressing, it could be bad. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop the video for a minute. I'm going to try a different method real quick, and I'll be right back. Okay, so what I did was I hooked up a C-clamp here. And uh, let me make sure you're still in the view, which you are good. Um, I'm going to try that instead. Uh, this is a really big caliper, and, you know, even I can't get a good leverage on the slip pliers. Now, this works on... A lot of smaller calipers, no problem, but uh, it is something you could probably use maybe if you had a little bigger set. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm using the old brake pad just to put against here. I'm putting the friction material against the piston because it's a little softer. That way it doesn't mar up the face. And all I'm going to do is just go ahead and twist this caliper in now. A little bit of resistance is normal. It's not completely something you want to lose your mind over necessarily. Um, now, sometimes they can be bad, too, you know, so keep that in mind. If it's really difficult to compress, that could mean a, a bad uh, caliper. So you basically just want to go until it bottoms out and then stop and then back it back off again. And then that's it. You've compressed it. Now, there's a lot of con um, controversy is the word I'm looking for around doing this method that I just did. And what that controversy is is... Uh, especially with newer ABS systems in vehicles, you can potentially any debris, old fluid or uh, metal or anything that gets inside, contaminants would be a good word to use, inside the fluid of the caliper and up through the hose can get pushed into the ABS system, which is a very sensitive system uh, and possibly ruin your ABS. Uh, I've never had it happen. Do that at your own risk. You make that, you know, educated decision on what you want to do. Um, Always want to look in here, make sure there's no bubbling or holes in the piston. Check it for leaks. Uh, this little rubber around here, make sure it's good. It looks fine. Uh, sometimes you can get a little air pocket in there. If you take a little tiny pick without jabbing it and go along the piston here, um, you can kind of burp it where you kind of lift the boot off the piston and kind of work it, and it'll pop that little burp, that little bubble out, you know, of it. So, so that's good. Everything looks good there. Um, I don't see any reason for concern. I've not been able to slap this back on there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of grease here. Um, and this helps cut down on noise and squeaking. I'm going to put a little bit of this Permatex around here on there and on the ears as well. This keeps, once again, keeps it from rusting out, uh, which causes, you know, the rust jacking, which is obviously what causes a lot of issues with uh, brakes hanging up, especially in our area. Okay. A little more in there and I'll use my finger to spread it because that brush is terrible. So what I do is just kind of rub it around the face of the 
pissed in here. If you get it on the boot, it's not going to hurt anything. Just enough that when the new brake pad settles in with it, um, it'll have a nice clean, uh, or the grease will like, I guess, from what I understand anyway, also keeps rust from building up behind it, also keeps any squeaking down. So we're good there. We're going to go ahead and uh, hang our caliper up temporarily for a minute here. Um, back on the spring here. I'll try to anyway. There we go. Just to hold it out of our way. Um, now I'm going to focus on the uh, sliders here. Uh, if you recall, I believe I said this came out of the top. Uh, basically, just going to wipe them off with a clean rag. Uh, inspect them for any kind of issues like uh, rust or anything like that. Um, I didn't really have any unusual time getting them out of the caliper bracket like as far as being seized in there uh, nothing abnormal they can be in there a little tight on this this type of braking system I don't really care for it so just clean off the old grease make sure there's nothing on there no rust or anything inspect the threads and everything looks great actually so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna sit these I'm gonna get more of my uh, brake caliper grease I love this stuff I'm just gonna put some on here all over this end here up around the threads too doesn't hurt either because that way it'll help seal the grease kind of acts as a help so you now you don't want too much this is probably actually too much I just added too much more I'll take a little bit of that off you don't want too much because you can actually cause um, these pins to bind and get stuck with too much grease too this style doesn't seem to be affected as much as the newer other style brakes but so those are nice and grease. Um, that actually should be fine. I don't have too, too much on there, but just not. sit them somewhere where they don't get any contaminants on them. Close up your grease. And then what I'd like to do then is make sure you have clean hands. And then I'm going to grab um, a can of fluid film here. Try not to knock you guys over. You still recording? Oh yeah, you're still recording. We got 62 minutes left on this lovely battery here. I'm just going to give it just a nice little coating here, nothing too crazy. And what that does is that helps to keep the uh, rust from building up on the uh, on the hub here, on the, on the uh, face of the hub. Okay, so next we're going to get our brand new rotor. Make sure your hands are clean, you don't want any grease on it. Go ahead and we're going to slide that on there. I'm going to take a lug nut put it on backwards can't do this with all but some and what this is going to do is just uh, keep your rotor nice and keep it from bouncing all over the place while you're trying to put this stuff back together so next make sure you're in good view let me actually bring you that way a little bit uh, next we're going to put our caliper bracket back on I still have my two bolts uh, back here uh, freely waiting to go for this uh, this is the part where you want to try not to, because we grease up, if you recall these areas here, you want to try not to get the grease all over the new uh, rotor. So um, what I'm going to do is make sure there's none on there. And then this goes on like, no, it goes on like this. There we go. No, hold on, guys. First day at the job. Okay, like this. Sorry. A little bit of a test on dexterity there. And then you can start them by hand. These bolts that I pointed out to you earlier in the video that hold the bracket on start the bottom one everything should start by hand you shouldn't have to be ramming these in there with uh, any kind of ridiculous force all right now those are on there I'm gonna go ahead and get my socket wrench here back on I like the bigger one because it gives me a little leverage to tighten it real good get that tightened down um, 80 foot pounds you might want to look that up I believe this is 80 foot pounds I go until it's tight um, I mean, you don't want these coming loose, obviously, but I I very rarely torque anything. The only thing I really ever torque is uh, engine stuff, uh, like manifolds and stuff like that, and uh, wheels. I don't play games with wheels. Sometimes I actually over-torque wheels a little bit. Check on that. That's good. Back. Beautiful. Okay. So that's tight enough for my happiness. Come back down here on the ground where I can see. Oh, the beauties of not having a lift. Okay, now we're going to put our brake pads in. I should have had that ready to go for you here. 
I'm sure somebody out there is going to be correcting me on how I did this. Um, but the way the old brake pad was on there was, and I believe, correct me again guys, the uh, sensor here, the uh, wear indicator sensor from what the old pad was, was originally in there. Um, I'm going to put that in, just kind of pops in there like that. And then we have to take the one pad that doesn't have the wear indicator. And these aren't directional. Sometimes there's an inner and outer. If you get the real high-end uh, Napa stuff, a lot of times they'll have an inner and outer pad where they're formulated differently. Um, probably because I've noticed over the years, sometimes the inner and outers can wear at different speeds, I've noticed. So that could be why. Okay, so pads are in. Let me give you a quick look at that before we get too carried away here. So your pads are in. They basically just slide in there they should be able to move freely if they don't then there's there's some kind of you need to go back in here and clean up this bracket some more up here take this back apart get any additional rust out of there you should never have to uh cut away at that you know what i mean you should never have to cut away at the pads they should be able to move this is what keeps them from binding and hanging up so that's kind of what it looks like all pressed against your nice clean rotor and your clean hardware and everything all right i'm going to sit you back down Give you a little different angle here so you can see everything a little better. Uh, once again, like I just showed you, got the pads in, rubbers are in good shape. Um, everything's ready. These are nice and tight. These bracket bolts that hold the caliper bracket on. Uh, caliper looks good. I don't see any leaks. I mean, it's getting a little rusty. I would say uh, this is probably going to be its last uh, run, this caliper. Uh, if it survives um, this run, I'm probably going to replace the calipers on the next brake change, which won't be long from now because, like I said, my dad drives a lot so we're gonna go ahead and get the brake caliper put back on now when you do this you want to be aware of where your rubber boots are you don't want to pinch them so you got to kind of work it with your fingers to get them lined up get them nice and straight in there and kind of pick at them and now once you get your bolt started you'll you'll be able to figure out what's going on there so i believe i said the one that's got the rubber garment on still goes in the top uh, we'll know here in a minute all right get that moving there this one should line up here nicely good okay so what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop there for just a minute uh, I got to clean up my hands because they're a little messy I don't want to slip off the uh, wrench and I don't want to record 15 minutes of me trying to get my hands clean so hold tight while I clean up my hands and I'll be right back Okay, my apologies. My hands are now a little bit cleaner. So basically, like I said, these can be a little tough to get in. And I'm probably, I could be doing something wrong. So um, I know the bracket's clean in here. Um, I know that the boots are good. I know they're greased. Um, it could be normal. I don't know. Maybe somebody in the comments will mention something. But every time I do brakes on this style GM, I always have trouble getting these in. So I got them started. Um, so what we're going to do is go ahead and crack them down, crank them down here, get my socket on it. Probably should get a smaller socket wrench to make this go a little quicker. I don't know the foot-pounds on this. Um, like I said, um, I'm sure if you Google it, you'd probably be able to find it without any problems. I'd be really surprised if Google didn't show up. I mean, you could always look in the manual. I'm sure there's a book somewhere for these. Make sure your rubber's nice and straight and not pinched or cocked or anything weird. All right, so we'll go ahead and start. Before I tighten that up, I'm going to tighten the bottom one real quick. I'm doing it by hand. I could use um, my air ratchet, but I figured not everybody has air tools, so I've already cheated, <laughs> cheated quite a bit for those DIYers that don't have as many tools. I'm kind of a tool junkie. Uh, the one thing that I'm hoping we get another, what everybody calls it, a trump check, because I would love to get a, uh, not a scissor lift, but one of those Ben Pack, uh, maybe like a 5,000 pounders uh, lift, and you slide under each end, and then there's a hydraulic hose and a 110 pump, and um, you don't want to go too tight, you don't want to rip the threads out of the uh, caliper, um, but 
you want to be tight enough. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, I'd love to get one of those bend pack lifts um, just for the driveway here. And I'll get some more of these cement slabs that I put in between the gravel here that I work on. Uh, that would honestly be really nice to have because that would help out quite a bit with our amount of cars that I work on here. I'm just getting some of the extra loose rust off here. Okay, like I said, I'm just inspecting. This caliper probably, in my opinion, is probably gonna be its last run. Uh, not because it's necessarily bad, but because the outside is pretty rusted and um, they can sometimes get um, pinholes in them and then they leak brake fluid. So, uh, but other than that, we should be good here. You just wanna make sure that your, your hose is uh, not uh, kinked at all. Um, your brake hose, make sure it's going and flowing in the proper direction here. You know, make sure it's nice and flows up where it should check it for any cracks it's always nice to kind of lift this up too and look around it look for cracks too um, especially where it rubs up here along the shock or the strut so that looks okay check your ABS sensor here wire runs down back and underneath make sure it's good if you do have any exert fittings on here like on the ball joints down here um, the uh, factory ones I don't think do but aftermarket's uh, uh, ball joints. Most of them have the uh, grease fittings, nipples on the bottom, so you could fill them up. You know, take this time, you know, while you're in here. I mean, how often are you going to rip your wheel off, you know? So take your time, you know, check your, your boot, make sure it's good, make sure your, your strut here uh, isn't leaking anywhere. Needs replaced. These struts are actually fairly new. They're only about a year and a half, two years old. I put these on there. Uh, quick struts. I pay like $159 on Amazon. I love Amazon. Um, you know, check to make sure your brake line's not ridiculously rusted. This is actually a replacement brake line I put on, but not long ago, so it should be fine. Check your control arm bushings, things like that. Um, you know, common sense stuff. You know, look everything over, you know. Uh, you want to look at your uh, garments here on your uh, bushings for your sway bars. Check your sway bar pins, which I believe you probably can't see from this angle. Now I'll have to show you the other angle. But what I'm going to do is, I'm gonna, now that you can see everything's back together, I'm... Um, I'm gonna go ahead and swing the wheel straight and um, make sure I don't have any grease like I do on the rotor. Um, uh, check everything one more time and then I'm gonna get the bolt wheel put back on and then I'm gonna show you one other thing I like to do. Okay guys, a uh, little bonus footage here. I'm on the passenger side, which I told you I wasn't gonna film because it's the same as the driver's side, uh, basically. Um, what I did have to do is get a caliper. Now I already showed you in the other video how to put the caliper on, so um, I'm not going to show you how to put the new caliper on because it's the same process. Uh, but, however, I am going to show you how to bleed it. Um, so, I made this homemade bleeder, which is this old Gatorade bottle with a hose. Um, I apologize, I don't remember the diameter of the hose. But I'm going to sit that there. It's got a little bit of brake fluid in the bottom of it. Um, the, uh, the banjo nut on here is a... Um, let me get this tight there and... The banjo nut on here, uh, which is the bolt that holds in the, or bolt I should say, is the part that holds in the um, brake hose. And there's a copper washer that goes onto the banjo nut right here, and then goes through the hose, brake hose. Um, so the brake hose is going to go on like this, so you're going to put it through, and then the other side, to make sure it's not, the old one's still not on the hose, there's another copper washer. So, basically get that started, like I said, always by hand. Get that moving there. Okay, now I'm going to tighten that down. You don't want it too tight, but you don't want it coming loose either. Um, so now, I'm going to go ahead and crack this bleeder loose here, which unfortunately I kind of painted myself into a corner here. You have to give me a minute. I don't like the way that's on there. I'm going to try to reposition that. I have a feeling the bleeder's supposed to be down here. Um, for some reason, it's they put it on the wrong spot, I think. But not the end of the world. What I'm going to do is uh, tighten that down. Put this in here, which is going to hopefully help it from 
Okay. So all I did was I just gave myself a little bit of room in between the hose and here because for some reason that's ridiculously too um, too close. I don't think that's on there in the right place. It won't hurt anything, but it's still kind of more of a, just an annoying type of thing. All right, so I've got the bleeder loose there. I'm going to put the hose on it here, on the end of it. And then what I'm going to do is I have this little thing here that they make from Lyle that is a hose pincher. Now, some people say don't do this. Not good on a hose, but uh, once again, I've never really had a problem. Make sure you guys are in view there. Yep, you are. So eventually you will see it start to gravity bleed, which means just the uh, fluid will come down through the hose on its own just from gravity because the reservoir is up higher and will fill up the caliper and then start to come out of here. Now because I have a hose on here and I have it shut off like that, I'm going to go ahead with the bottle and get in and pump the brakes. Make sure your uh, reservoir is filled too. start the car to get a little bit better a uh, little better flow there from the brake booster giving you assistance so what you're going to do now is just basically tighten this back up without taking the hose off because you'll let air back in like that take your hose off and then I lift it up to let it drain down into the bottle and that's it uh, make sure you're Reservoir is filled, obviously, your brake fluid reservoir. I'll show you where that's at here. I'm going to give that a little bit more of a tighten there. Now, I always like to take a little bit of this Permatex grease and put it around the bleeder and uh, over the nipple. That'll help it from rusting, hopefully. And then also, they give you this little nipple that goes over it. But that just is more or less to help try to prevent it from rusting, you know, unnecessarily. So, um, like I said, same as I showed you before, putting the caliper on, uh, same process, comes with all new uh, hardware, uh, new boots, new, new slider pins. I um, uh, just went ahead and I started it just to give myself a little bit extra. The brake booster helps to um, get the fluid to flow a little better. Uh, and basically, I just gave it a good, I don't know, six to ten pumps, good solid to the floor pumps. And that pushes any air out or anything in the system and gets a lot of new fluid moved through here so if there was any fluid in the line it'll push fresher stuff through um, I not long ago changed the, all the brake fluid in this car so uh, should be good um, but other than that that's it um, just wanted to show you how to bleed that tighten that bleeder back up it's a 10 millimeter this was an 11 which I thought was weird uh, millimeter for that inspect your brake hose do the wheel wiggle thing again, check, you know, the 10, the 2, all the different angles that you can uh, to verify there's no ball joint problems or anything. It also checks the wheel bearing, too. I forgot to mention that when you do that. It looks for any play in a wheel bearing. Uh, look at everything. Make sure if you have any grease fittings, uh, go ahead and check the grease level and everything. And uh, check your strut, and that's it. So that's a little bonus footage. Like I said, this caliper was on here. I didn't show it to you, but as you can see from the rust, it was... It was pretty bad. <laughs> so I just went ahead and changed it. So I hope this helps somebody. Uh, once again, uh, thanks for watching. And if I put this in the middle of the video, continue watching. So thanks again, guys. Okay, so obviously once you uh, get everything put back together, um, word of warning, pump your brakes up several times <laughs> before you go moving because you'll get a real quick uh, pleasant surprise. Uh, if you start pulling away without pumping your brakes up because you won't have any brakes uh, it takes a little while for the piston to fill back up with fluid after you push it all out uh, so yes do that <laughs> all right so uh, first i'm going to check make sure the calipers or the rotors clean of any kind of grease one good last word around it here um, and then this is the part that everybody laughs at but i like doing this because i take a little bit of fluid film and just go around there 
which kind of keeps basically around the hat of the rotor. And I'll go around here one more time because I got fluid film all over the surface area. Okay, beautiful. So we'll let that drip dry. I'm going to grab the wheel, put it on. Um, I don't know the torque spec on the tire either. I should, but I don't. Uh, once again, I go to 104 foot-pounds just because I'm on an air of caution. I don't believe it is that high. It might only be 85 to 90, but once again, if you want torque specs, I'd suggest checking in the bulk. All right, so we've got our wheel here. Let's lift up with our arms, press against our knees, so not to pull your back out. Get that on there, it's nice and straight. This lug nut started. Uh, I'm not checking any of the uh, grease in the tie rod or anything like that or the ball joint because I, like I said, I was just in here on the last oil change and I actually serviced all that and filled everything up. Uh, once again, your tie rod may not have a ability to be greased because factory ones don't. So, but all mine are aftermarket, which they'll last a lot longer. So, make sure these all start nicely by hand. If they don't, then there's something wrong. Not just on tighten. Really, you want to go in a crisscross pattern. Okay, and then, like I said, I will go back later, crack them loose tight, and do them with the torque wrench because you don't want your new rotor to get warped. This is just for purposes of sitting the vehicle back down on its own wheel again while I go do the other side. I'm not gonna film the other side because obviously it's the you know, <laughs> same as this side. So this is a good time now you grab your tire at the, um, the nine o'clock, the three o'clock and give it a tilt back and forth and look for any popping. Now there could be a little play here that's normal. What you're feeling for is like a popping sensation. If you do, then you either have a tie rod, outer tie rod, or even possibly an inner tie rod going bad. Uh, now, if it's really excessive, uh, you could also have a control arm bushing uh, that is causing the tire to really sink in and go bad. Um, and then, of course, there could be a problem with your rack and pinion, too, uh, as far as the uh, where it mounts to the uh, subframe, or it could actually be something internal, which would be requiring a replacement rack and pinion. Um, there's nothing excessive here. There's no popping. There is a little movement, but that's just the uh, movement of just, you know, what you feel, you know. Uh, now, obviously, making sure it's supported, you want to now go at the 6 and the 12, do the same up and back forth wiggle motion, and then I'll even go at the 7 and the, the 1 o'clock. I'll go at all angles, just check for play, which everything good feels good. So... That's pretty much it, guys. Um, jack it up a little bit. Get your jack stand out that it's sitting on. Get your jack out. Pump up the brakes. Like I said, don't forget to pump up the brakes because you will be pleasantly surprised if you don't on how you have no brakes after doing this. And you will wreck into something or kill somebody. Um, I'm going to go do the other side. I'm going to sit the car back down. I will go over it with my torque wrench. Um, I go to 104 foot-pounds. Like I said, I don't believe that's what it is. I believe it's a lot less than that. Uh, torque these guys down and um, should be it uh, and I'm yes I'm going to clean this wheel up because it looks terrible uh, he just drives he does not take care of it I also like to check the oil um, you know check everything else how back brakes are fairly new um, he's definitely going to need tires before inspection I think these are down about three to four thirty seconds and by the time inspection rolls around in the middle of winter he'll definitely be due so um, that's it that's uh, one side completed Check your reservoir and just uh, your brake fluid reservoir um, and just go ahead and do the exact same thing on the other side. All right. Thanks for watching.